Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for watching. This house is massive and the garage is huge too. So look, if you're a subscriber, I really appreciate you uh, subscribing to my channel, watching my videos. If you're not a subscriber to my videos, I got something fun for you here. If, if you subscribe to my channel, put subscribed down in the comments, I'm going to send you out a free hoodie. So I'll pick, I'll pick a few winners out of the comments and we'll send you out some free free gear here if, if you want to subscribe to the channel I really appreciate it now let me know what you think of a house this size I mean this thing is huge not only is the house huge but the basement I mean the garage is huge too now I don't know these people that are living here we're just hired to come in and do the concrete floors for the guys that do the foundation walls so we're a sub on this job. Now this will be really the only day that we're on this project. We decided to come here and get everything poured today. It was like 52 yards of concrete. Now you let me know in the video, I'm gonna reveal just how big this basement is, how many square feet it is, and then how many square feet the garage is too. So I give you the total square footage of the house and the garage. Now, if you listen to the video and you can and you can comment the exact square footage of both, I'll also pick a winner from that and send you out a hooded sweatshirt with either a day's concrete one or everything about concrete sweatshirt. Now, when we go about these floors that are this big, we there's usually like a few issues that we have to deal with. The first is the access. So the access to this one wasn't good at all as far as a concrete truck goes. That's one of the reasons we're using a pump. So we had to park the pump in front of the garage, which you'll see a little bit later in the video. And then as we pump a floor like this, you know, we have a process, we have a plan of attack on every single job that we do, big or small. And part of that plan, part of the thinking of the way that we start, like where we start pumping this floor, comes into where and when and how we're gonna finish the concrete floor. Like how are we gonna power trial this thing? Do we have access? to back our truck up so we can drop a power trial down with a crane is one thing we think about. Another thing we think about is where is the sun gonna hit the floor first? And where it's late in the fall where the sun doesn't get up very high over the trees, you'll see a little bit later when we're finishing this, just how much of this actually does get in the sun and then how much is blocked by the sun by the concrete walls and leaves all that part in the shade, which kind of makes it like finishing two different floors because the parts in the sun will set up, they'll cure up twice as fast as the parts that just stay in the shade all day. So that's a little bit of the thinking, uh, the access part of it, and then you know how are we gonna finish this thing? What Can we back a truck up to where we need to drop a power trial down first? So when, you, when we have a pump truck like this, like we could pretty much start anywhere we want and then jump out you know, wherever we need to. So we decided to start up on that further end and then work our way back this way towards the garage. And you can see how Darren, Darren's kind of holding the end of the hose, how he's kind of just working his way back and forth from one way to the other. We like to keep kind of like a straight line with the concrete as we go in case, you know, from truck to truck. So if a truck runs out, we don't just have the concrete kind of like scattered all over the place. This also makes it a little bit easier to finish the concrete. Then you know, you know, depending on what truck, truck number one, truck number two, truck number three, kind of where it started and where it stopped, because not all the trucks will set up the same, you know, evenly. So a lot of times the trucks will set up differently. So it's just nice to know roughly, you know, where your stop and start lines are for each truck as we go to. Now, for some reason, I don't know, I can't remember why, for some reason we decided just to hand screed this one and not use our, our, our Vibra screeds. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know we have a bunch of power screeds from different companies. And for, for whatever reason, which I don't remember why, we just decided to hand screed this one. Maybe sometimes the guys just think they need the exercise from hand screeding, so that, that could have been it right there. That what we do like about some of these bigger floors like this, what is nice about them, what is actually kind of easier about them sometimes is there's a lot of open space. So you can dump one truck out really quick and you can get it screeded and bowl floated really fast. So you can, you can actually empty out a couple trucks on a job like this in just you know 20 or 30 minutes pretty easily. 
You're going to see how we jump out of these things. So Harvey just got out. Um, Luke's going to jump out next. He's the guy bull floating right now. We'll dump, we're up there starting the garage already while we're waiting for these guys to get out of here. And then, you know, Luke jumps out. He gets out of the way. And then Darren's just going to kind of finish it up. He's going to work his way back to the corner with a small screed, do as much as he can with that. And then he'll just kind of, you'll see he'll kind of just mag his way out. And then we'll just kind of fill in where the we pull the ladder out here, where he pulls his boots out, and then where we pull the ladder out. And that's how we get out of most of our basement floors, is just like that. So we're going to jump onto the garage now. All right, got the house done. We jump on the garage. We jump on the garage right here, and then we've got another little piece over there we're going to do. So the spec on this job, on the blueprints, it called for two inches of styrofoam in the garage and a matter rebar like you see this, but it didn't call for that in the house. So, you know, basically it's probably just a weight thing. The other thing, the, the thickness of the floor in the garage here was six inches and in the house it was four inches. And you can see then this little thing over here, I don't know what that's for, just a little a little mini garage maybe for his lawnmower. I don't know. That just called for wire versus the rebar. So the only thing I can think of is the engineer probably thought that where it's going to be, there's going to be more of a load in the garage, more weight in the garage because of the vehicles. He just wanted a little bit heavier reinforcement in the garage versus in the basement floor or this little mini garage over here to the left. I don't know. Let me, let me know what you guys think about that. Also, there's six mil poly on top of the styrofoam here too just to help keep moisture from coming up through the sub base up into the floor that's pretty standard on most all our pours now these days but the styrofoam under the floors isn't sometimes it's a code thing like the code enforcement officer will make you put the styrofoam under there whether you need it or not and then sometimes it's uh in some towns, it's just like, okay, you guys do whatever you want. We don't care if you have styrofoam under it or not. So it's when someone, it, what makes it difficult for us sometimes is when someone calls us just over the phone and asks us for a price on something, it's like, first thing we ask for, okay, what does your code enforcement officer require in your town? And it's, it's really amazing how much it varies from town to town. So it's, Sometimes it's just hard to give people a quote over the phone before they go and talk to their code enforcement guy. We're going to get on to finishing this in just in a minute. We'll show you that. And then at the very end, we'll show you something else we do. The same day we finish it, we also like to do this. That way we don't have to come back and do it the next day. I don't know if you can guess what I mean by that, but you'll see it towards the end of the video. Now we're finishing this up. They got, not only do we have the garage to do, we have this little mini thing to do. A mini me garage, I guess. Which is fine. I think we could all use one of those probably for something or another. See Harvey, Harvey's holding the hose and he's pulling the wire up at the same time. He's got the wire hook in his right hand, holding the hose in his left hand. So he's, uh, he's pretty super talented that way. And then he can rake concrete, and he can screed concrete, he can mag edges. He can literally do everything with concrete. Hey, right here, I just wanted to show you guys what kick screeding is. So, you know, we can do this. One guy could really do this on, on a, something this small, but when you get into a larger, like we've been doing for the rest of the floor, you know, with a 14-foot screed or a 16-foot screed, two guys that kick screed like this can screed a lot of concrete pretty fast without having to stop just by using this type of motion right here so we're looking at the ends of our screeds as we're screeding and we're kicking our footprints in as we work our way backwards that just makes things kind of kind of fast for us i mean when you do something like that every day it becomes basically just like walking or jogging so it, it may it may look hard and it may look like it's painful but it's really not too bad that's it all done 
Nine o'clock. So two hours for 52.5 yards, four different sections. I would say everything went pretty good. Now we're just gonna hang out, finish it today. You need me to jump down there? You good? No, I think I'm good for right now. Like, just in the back I'm about to go up the top there. Okay. Fifty-two and a half yards. All done. All poured by nine o'clock. It's now nine fifty-four. See that? And we're starting to finish it already. She's so setting up really good. Which is, I mean, for a, a fall day. We're in the middle of October. It's pretty cool out. That's pretty, pretty good. Is all you can ask for. We got about 2,200 square feet in the house. 40 by 24. You know, about you know another thousand square feet here in the garage, plus this little thing over here. <clears throat> so good size house. All right, so I'm just getting ready to start finishing the garage floor. Luke is down in the basement. He's already started finishing down there. Remember, this, these two trucks up here were quite a bit behind, you know, the first trucks from the house. So that's why I'm starting quite a bit later than he is. Plus, look at all the shade we got there. So that's basically the first hit right there. We go around, we do all the edges. We hit it with a power trowel. We call that floating the floor. We float it first. Luke's down here. Look at the shade and the sun. He's kind of fighting. That line is from the top of the concrete wall over here. The sun does not get up too high this time of year. It's late in the fall. So he's going to be fighting that, that shade sun line all floor long. Now, as the, as the morning went on here, we got closer to noontime. The wind really picked up. And because it's late in the fall, the leaves really started falling off the trees. So... Not only are we fighting, you know, the, the shade and the sun, but now we got to fight the leaves. And we knew that in advance because we've done, it, it happens every year like this. So we brought our big leaf blower with us today. And, you know, if, if one guy's free, if one guy's not down there, if all of us aren't power trial, and then usually there's one guy free enough to go around and buzz those leaves off while the guy is trowel because we don't really want to power trowel those into the concrete obviously and the power trowel doesn't always like blow them out of the way first so when there gets a lot of them out there you kind of have to get out there with a blower and just keep blowing them off now that little dewalt blower he's got that's kind of handy because one guy the guy running the power trowel can actually run that at the same time too if he needs to and just carry that around with him you can see how windy it got as uh, as we're getting closer to noontime here. Now the wind is kind of a it can be kind of a blessing in, in disguise too because it can kind of help dry up the parts in the shade that aren't curing up as as fast as the parts in the sun too. So it's not like we're we're totally mad that it's windy, but it can get frustrating fighting these leaves. Now what's worse than the leaves is when you have a pine tree close by and you got pine needles falling down those are harder to get off or those little like we call them little helicopter things that come off the trees they kind of look like a helicopter as they're coming down to the ground those things are hard to get off too sometimes without a blower and if you hit one of those with a power trial and the blade kind of smushes it into the concrete then you then it's a real pain so leaves are probably actually the least the least painful thing but you can see them see how they just kind of fall and sit on there so it's it just adds another element to the finishing that's kind of a pain in the butt luckily on a garage like this you know you can kind of just blow them off by blowing them out the door but in the basement <laughs> you can't just blow them off you got to blow them into a corner and then pick them up and throw them out over the top of the wall so that's kind of what luke has been dealing with down there in the basement a little bit 
Now with the garage, it started after it started curing up. It started curing up pretty good, and it went pretty, it went pretty fast actually. The styrofoam that's underneath the floor actually helps hold some of the heat in the concrete, so the concrete stays a little bit warmer itself, which helps cure it up faster. Versus downstairs, we just poured on poly, and then the poly was right over the dirt. For some reason, the engineer didn't spec styrofoam in the basement. He only spec'd it in the garage. So when we when we pour late in the fall or in the winter up here in Maine, and we know we're pouring on styrofoam, which most of the time we are, we actually kind of like that because it, it the concrete sets up faster on the styrofoam. This thing's finishing up pretty good now. I'm just following my pattern you know the garage slopes three inches from the back to the front so it's got a little bit of a slope in it not really that noticeable here in the video but it, it has a little slope in it so a good garage boat done some of it's already done one more hit on some of it basement's going pretty good The reason the garage is drying a little bit better than the basement is the garage had styrofoam under it and that helps warm the concrete up a little bit more. Plus it's had a little bit more sun, but the basement's not too far behind it. There'll be a couple more hours we'll be done with this. See what time it is now. 11.56. So it's noon time. Still going pretty good for a day like today. So Luke's kind of hitting that for the last time. We call that shining it out. You can see he's going from that wall that's in the sun just into the part that's the shade. He's not going completely all the way to the other wall yet. He's going to let that cure up a little bit longer so he doesn't have to hit it two more times. So he'll, he'll work his way down through that whole sun down to the end and then shut the power trial off and then probably give that another 30 minutes in the shade and then buzz that then he can pull that power trial out of there now the garage is all done you can see it's all shined out we've got our chalk lines all snapped where we want to cut our joints and this is what i was talking about a little earlier in the video this is what we like to do on all our concrete floors the same day is as soon as we get done power trialing as soon as we get done burning out the concrete shining it out glassing it out we like to snap our chalk lines and get the joint sawed the same day. And the reason we like that is number one, the concrete's more likely to crack in the joints. The earlier you cut it, that's why they call them early entry saws or green cutting saws. And the other thing, the other reason why we like to get them cut the same day is because we're not coming back here tomorrow. We could be, we could literally be pouring somewhere two hours away from here. This job right here is about an hour south of our shop. And I mean, the next day we could be an hour north of the shop. So we don't want to have to drive all the way back here the next day just to get the joints in. Um, so this saves us a heck of a lot of time using these early entry saws and getting the joints sawed in. Now, the joints on this, if, if the skid plate, if the skid plate is new and you've got a good blade on it and the saw runs really well, then the joints come out looking really, really nice. They don't come out ravelly or chipping or anything like that, in case you're wondering. They come out nice and tight and clean. They look really good. We don't usually have a problem with that at all. At least, and that might have something to do with our concrete too. I mean, if you're having trouble with that type of thing. But And my guys don't like the guide that comes on this. The guide kind of, kind of vibrates and rattles a little bit. It's not that good. So my guys just eye it from the there's a little nub on the beginning of the saw where that where that guide was so they've gotten so good at cutting these straight that they just eye it using that little nub now that's basically how we do our floors you know this this is a pretty good one 52 yards uh, a little over 3200 square feet with that little mini garage and this is the kind of stuff we do every day we like getting in and out in the day because the builders are going to show up the next day and they're going to have lumber scattered everywhere and then we're working around that so again if you haven't subscribed yet guys subscribe thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one